My 2020 Santa Cruz Hightower has been with me for two and a half years, which means it's been on this channel since the beginning. In fact, the first ever episode was about this bike. Over the last two years, I've done a number of videos on this versatile trail weapon, which is how a lot of you found this channel to begin with. So now that I'm switching things up and moving to the transition Sentinel for my new long travel trail bike, it's no surprise that many of you are asking me what the differences are between these two designs and why I personally made the change. Both bikes are fairly close in their travel numbers, but really they are wildly different. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rich and today I'm gonna to break down the differences between these two bikes and I'm gonna discuss what type of rider and terrain I think each is a best fit for. Let's kick things off with a few numbers to see how these bikes stack up on paper. The high tower boasts 145 millimeters of rear travel with 150 millimeters stock up front. The geometry of this bike can vary a bit with the use of a flip chip that's located on the shock mount of the lower linkage. So we'll cover both options. In the high setting, the bike has a 65 and a half degree head tube angle, a 473 millimeter reach, a 344 millimeter bottom bracket height. The chainstay is 433 millimeters with a wheelbase of 1,231 millimeters. In the low setting, the head tube slackens a bit to 65.2 degrees. The reach shortens to 470 millimeters. The bottom bracket drops to 340 millimeters. The chainstay is still 433 millimeters with a wheel base lengthening to 1,232 millimeters. Santa Cruz also specs this build to be capable of running a fork up to 170 millimeters, which changes these numbers a bit further. I personally felt like the bike felt great with the fork set to 160 millimeters and in the low position, which takes it to an even slacker 64.7 degrees on the head tube angle. I've spent quite a bit of time running this bike in both the high and low settings, as well as both a 150 mil and 160 millimeter fork setup. The bike in the high setting with a 150 fork is very nimble and poppy, while the low setting with a 160 mil fork makes the bike more aggressive and stable on rougher trails. The Sentinel V2 comes stock at 150 millimeters out back with a 160 millimeter fork. And while it does not offer a flip chip, it is possible to vary the fork travel plus or minus 10 mils. And a shorter stroke shock can also be used to reduce the rear travel to 140 mils. The stock geometry is among the most aggressive in its class with a 63 and a half degree head tube angle, a 476 millimeter reach, 346 millimeter bottom bracket height, a longer 440 millimeter chainstay and a wheelbase of 1,263 millimeters. Another differentiating factor between the two bikes is the difference in the leverage curve and the shock compatibility. The high tower runs a very linear leverage curve and it's optimized for air shocks. In fact, Santa Cruz specifically states that this bike is not coil shock compatible. Beyond the linear leverage curve, the shock tunnel is quite restrictive. Most coils will rub the frame and there's even several air shocks that won't fit within the tunnel's clearance. The Sentinel offers a progressive leverage curve and is compatible with both air and coil shocks. There are some frame restrictions, but most shocks on the market will fit just fine. So what do these numbers tell us? Well, the High Tower seems to be a very versatile trail bike that can blend itself with a lot of various riding styles and terrain whereas the Sentinel seems to offer more for the rider pursuing more aggressive terrain. Numbers on paper don't always tell the full story and there are nuances that can show up through real world experience. So let's talk a bit about my personal experience with both bikes so far. The High Tower has been with me for countless miles and I've really pushed the edge of what this bike is capable of. Even though it falls on the longer side of the travel for the trail bike category, it's still surprisingly fun on more mellow trails when set in the high position with a 150 millimeter fork. It's nimble and responsive, but still capable of handling some spicier tech here and there. When set to low and paired with a 160 mil fork, it becomes much hungrier for steeper and chunkier terrain. It can even handle the harder terrain found at bike parks such as Windrock and Snowshoe and take medium hits and drops really well. The bike's geometry allows for a wide range of riding styles from a more relaxed ready position to those with a more aggressive attack position. 
The limitation I personally found with this bike was its linear leverage curve, which struggles to resist bottom mounts on harder compressions. Over the last couple of years, I've tried various shocks, tunes, and setups, as well as the available cascade link, which definitely helps to increase the progressivity. While the performance did improve in this area, the bike still struggled on the larger hard hits that are in my skill set. In my long-term review of this bike that I put together over a year ago, I felt the high tower was one of the best all-arounders in its class, oh, yeah. and I still agree with this sentiment today. An added bonus is the robust design and thoughtful engineering of this bike. The suspension linkage is incredibly friendly to work on, and the bearing service is amongst the easiest to tackle. Not to mention the free bearing replacement kits for life. Well done, Santa Cruz. Okay, so the Sentinel I've had for just over two months now, but I've spent a lot of time dialing in my setup and I've been getting to know this bike quite well. It's a very different feeling bike from the high tower. In fact, it feels a bit more like a miniature downhill bike. The aggressive geometry is not really geared towards a more relaxed body position. The bike really only comes alive when using a very forward, over the bars attack position. Otherwise, you might find the bike to be a bit slower turning or feel a bit wandering. Since my primary intended use is for enduro racing and tackling larger, more aggressive features, it's a great fit for me. It forces me to stay mindful to ride the bike aggressively and offers a gentle nudge whenever my form is getting a bit sloppy. When it comes to larger hits, this bike really shines. The added progression has plenty of bottom out support, even when being used with a coil shock, which has given me a lot more confidence when things get a bit big. In fact, there's features that were really unnerving to hit on the high tower that didn't give me pause on the Sentinel at all. The biggest surprise of all to me was the pedaling efficiency. Bike design is all about compromise and typically you'd expect a bike that's more aggressive on the downs to be less efficient on the ups. But that's just not the case here. The pedaling efficiency of the Sentinel is impressive and offers a bit less pedal bob over the low slung version of Santa Cruz's VPP. Now, that's not to say that the VPP platform pedals poorly, it's just that the Sentinel is that good. I expect bikes like the Ibis Ritmo with the DW Link to top the class here, but the Sentinel is actually feeling pretty close. In the last year, I've added the Rebel Ranger into my quiver, and this awesome cross-country bike has taken over for rides on easy to moderate terrain. This makes the versatility of the high tower much less important for me, which allowed me to open up to bike options for more aggressive riding. What I'm getting at here is that the decision was highly personal to my specific situation, and I wouldn't suggest one bike over the other across the board to anyone else. It's important to really consider the range of terrain you plan to ride, how often you plan to ride trails on either end of that spectrum, and what your typical riding style is. Well, that's all for today. I hope this helped answer all your questions about how these two bikes compare. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a huge favor, hit that like button, drop me a comment below. I can't tell you how much it pleases the YouTube algorithm and it helps this channel reach a wider audience. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. This year is going to be packed full of incredible new trail systems, reviews, and we're finally getting back to training and racing. I promise you're not gonna wanna miss any of the content we've got lined up. Thanks for joining me here today. And as always, until next time, I hope to see you out on the trail.